Hi, this is Dr. Kingston, and in this video I'll be talking about the regions of the tongue and their innervation. The objective for this video is to describe those regions of the tongue and identify the nerves and modalities, so motor or sensory, that serve those regions. We're going to start off by very simply dividing the tongue up in four regional directions. So that first division will be superior-inferior. The superior surface of the tongue, so we'll divide it just like that, that superior surface of the tongue we'll call the dorsum of the tongue, and the inferior surface we'll call the ventral surface. The second division will separate the anterior two-thirds of the tongue from the posterior third. So this anterior is called the body, and this posterior section is called the root of the tongue. We're going to start off talking about the dorsum of the tongue, as there's a lot more going on here in terms of surface anatomy. Um, there are two large sulci that are going to divide the tongue into anterior and posterior, right and left. The terminal sulcus is what divides the anterior body from the posterior root on each side. So there is technically one on the left and one on the right. And the median sulcus then is going to divide that posterior tongue into right and left halves. This is actually sitting directly over a fibrous septum in the midline that extends all the way down into the body of the tongue here and is going to separate the right musculature from the left musculature. Now where all of these sulci meet up, there is a small depression called the foramen cecum. This makes for a nice little intersection point, but it's actually an embryological remnant left behind by the formation of the thyroid gland. So we're going to use that terminal sulcus to divide the tongue up into the lingual root and the lingual body. The root of the tongue sits roughly in the oropharynx, and because of this, it's going to follow the pattern of sensory innervation for the oropharynx. It doesn't have any sensory papillae, it doesn't have any taste buds or touch papillae, but it does have a very rugose appearance. That comes from the lingual tonsil, which is a mass of lymphatic nodules that cover its dorsal surface. So this is part of a larger lymphatic ring in the pharynx that we'll talk about more in future sessions. So for right now, it's enough to just understand that it's there. The body of the tongue, or that anterior two-thirds, sits roughly in the oral cavity, and again, it's going to share that pattern of innervation. The body of the tongue is very muscular. It's home to all of those intrinsic muscles that we looked at in a previous video, and it has attachment points for all of the extrinsic muscles as well. This is additionally where all of the lingual papillae are found. These are often referred to as taste buds, but they're also going to include some touch receptors. We think of the tongue as being primarily in the oral cavity, but it's also important to take note of its relationships with the pharynx and larynx. So to orient you here a little bit, here is the soft palate and the uvula, and here is that very rugose lingual tonsil on the root of the tongue. The tongue is anchored to the epiglottis, so that first most superior laryngeal cartilage. And there are three mucosal folds that do this. So we have on the lateral sides the lateral epiglottic folds there and there. And then there is a medial epiglottic fold attaching up to the midline of the tongue as well. In between these folds are the epiglottic voleculi, or spit traps as I like to call them, which are going to collect saliva that flow into them until you're ready to swallow it. So that's this area right in there. This keeps the saliva from heading down into your larynx and trachea unexpectedly, which would be bad. Now the ventral tongue is not divided up into any additional regions. It's tethered to the floor of the oral cavity by the lingual frenulum, and on either side of that you can find those sublingual caruncles and the opening of the submandibular ducts. Running laterally from those, you have the sublingual folds, which are covering up the sublingual salivary glands, and house the openings of their many little ducts onto the oral floor. And if we move up off the oral floor, we can find these little fimbriated folds of mucosa that are going to be tying the floor mucosa up to the lateral tongue. 
Medial to those, we have this dark stripe. These are the deep lingual veins that are visible through the mucosa here. And the reason they look so dark is that they're very superficial from this angle. So they're sitting just beneath that mucous membrane. You can take advantage of this placement when you're administering medication. So medicines that are given sublingually will absorb into the bloodstream very quickly thanks to those veins proximity to the surface. All right, now that we've got some regions of the tongue delineated, let's use those to talk about innervation. Motor innervation is the easiest to begin with because both the root and the body of the tongue are innervated by the same nerve. All of the muscles, minus that palatal glossus muscle, that move and change the shape of the tongue are going to be innervated by the hypoglossal nerve. The hypoglossal nerve exits the hypoglossal foramen near the foramen magnum and it travels inferiorly and anteriorly into the neck. It's going to enter the oral cavity by jumping just deep to the mylohyoid muscle and from there it is going to send its branches up to the muscle of the tongue from an inferior position. So far, so easy. So let's complicate it a little bit. The sensory information from the tongue is carried by different nerves than the motor innervation. Not only that, but there are two types of sensory innervation here. We have somatic touch sensory and special taste sensory, and they are different for the anterior and posterior regions of the tongue. So I am going to pop up our dividing line here. And now you will note that this is not quite the same division as I showed you for the root of the tongue and body of the tongue. It doesn't line up purpose perfectly. For innervation purposes, the posterior part of the tongue is going to refer to the root of the tongue plus these valate papilla, these very big papilla that you can see in this little section here. And the body will be everything anterior to that. All right, so we've got that division. Let's pop up our territories here. So our posterior sensory innervation is going to be carried entirely by the glossopharyngeal nerve. So both that somatic touch sensory and the special taste sensory are carried on glossopharyngeal. glossopharyngeal. The glossopharyngeal nerve exits the cranium through the jugular foramen along with the vagus and accessory nerves in that internal jugular vein. It makes its way down into the pharynx by riding on the posterior surface of the stylopharyngeus muscle. And as it rides down here, it is going to slip in between the borders of our superior pharyngeal constrictor and the middle pharyngeal constrictor. Once it jumps into the pharynx here, it's going to distribute its branches via the pharyngeal plexus, and some of those are going to make their way to the posterior tongue. So while this posterior area is mostly nice and simple, there is just one little exception. There is always one little exception in anatomy. The vagus nerve, remember, innervates the larynx, which begins at the epiglottis. And some of its fibers have overlap, carrying some somatic sensory innervation from the very posterior most part of the tongue, which is back near those voleculae and back near the epiglottis. The specific branch of vagus involved here is the internal laryngeal nerve. So that is a branch of vagus that branches very early, just after it emerges from the jugular foramen, and which will travel inferiorly and pass into the larynx and pharynx through the thyrohyoid membrane. So that takes care of the posterior tongue. The anterior gets sen somatic sensory innervation from the same source as the rest of the inferior oral cavity, the lingual nerve. The lingual nerve is a branch of the mandibular division of trigeminal. It's going to originate in the infratemporal fossa deep to the mandibular ramus. It's going to travel anteriorly and inferiorly into the oral mucosa beneath the tongue. So we've seen this a few times now that it is attached to the submandibular ganglion. So here's that submandibular ganglion. And that is where parasympathetics from the facial nerve synapse to get to the submandibular and sublingual glands.
Then it wraps underneath the submandibular duct and innervates the tongue from inferiorly. We're gonna see another source of innervation for special sensory, taste sensory for the anterior tongue as well. So let's map that as green. This is going to be coming from the corda tympani, which is a branch of the facial nerve. As we're gonna see in much greater detail in some future sessions, the corda tympani branches off the facial nerve in the temporal bone and emerges out of the cranium into the infratemporal fossa. So you can see this here in the image. It is very tiny though, so I will outline it for you. And we can trace that all the way down anteriorly and inferiorly to where it joins up with the lingual nerve. Now these axons will run alongside the lingual nerve, but because they're just hitchhiking, we still consider them to be a separate entity. All right, so to quickly review here, the somatic sensory, the touch sensory from the anterior tongue is going to follow that lingual nerve all the way back up through the mandibular division and the trigeminal nerve to get back to the brain. Taste sensation though, taste sensation is going to follow the corda tympani fibers back up and through the facial nerve to get back up to the brain. Let's do a practice question to test what you've learned. The correct answer here is C, dry mouth. Now this is a multi-step question and a little bit complicated, so let's walk through why this is the answer. All right, so we have a patient reporting decreased sensation on the anterior right aspect of their tongue. All right, we think it's a nerve injury, but to prove that to ourselves, we'd like to see some additional symptoms. Um, so what symptom of these is most likely to experience? All right, so we need to figure out what nerve is responsible for taste sensation on the anterior right aspect of the tongue. And that is going to be that right corda tympani. Okay, and knowing that, we can use that to answer the question. Does the right corda tympani carry taste sensation from the left tongue? No. Does it carry taste sensation from the posterior right tongue? Nope, that's glossopharyngeal. Would the musculature on that side be paralyzed? Nope, that's carried by the hypoglossals. So by process of elimination, even if you weren't sure, you could work out that dry mouth was the most likely answer here. Now the reason it absolutely is the correct answer is because the parasympathetics that innervate both our sublingual glands and submandibular glands are also carried by the corda tympani. So any injury to that corda tympani nerve would not only affect taste on that side of the tongue, it would also inhibit secretion by these two salivary glands. All right, so dry mouth and decreased taste go hand in hand. And that is gonna bring us to the end. Thank you for watching.